What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the Banker Bros channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and in quarantine. I know I'm going a little crazy in quarantine too, but uh, at least I got the projects to keep me busy. And since I have time now, I'm finally going over the 20 hours of footage I have of how I built this little budget garage. I know it's not a real garage. I call it one to make myself feel good because I can't have a real one. But what it basically is, is just an enclosed carport. So uh, let's just go over some basics. We've got a $1,000 arrow carport and then we've got uh, $700 of basically siding. So uh, the arrow carport comes with the base frame and roofing. And then I added the siding that you see here. So this aluminum siding is the same siding I use on the front, also on the rear. And then over there, I have a clear vinyl corrugated siding. And the $700 also includes these three shop lights, that solar light, the uh, two by four, the wheels and the hinges necessary for the uh, front gate here. I'm just gonna close this up real quick just to show you guys, you know, it's functional, it works great. I've had this here for uh, just about a year and three months. Actually, no, a year and four months. I just I started this project back in December 2018. It's now uh, April 7th, 2020. So, you know, it's, it's been quite some time. And I opened this thing up at least twice every day to get my car out and put it back in uh, as you guys can see the space in here is great too you know 12 feet wide 20 feet deep more than enough to hold a car motorcycle uh all my tools and fluids and stuff back there i wish i had more space uh, it would be nice to have like a three car garage but uh you know i can't have one of those that's why i settled on a tight budget to get this done and keep in mind you know i did this entirely by myself and I really, really liked how it turned out. As you guys can see, it it's it's great for for the money. You know, I I admit, you know, you could do better. You know, I'm not I'm not that well versed in you know carpentry or welding or anything like that. So I didn't get fancy with what you can do. And then obviously, if you have those skills, you could do much better. This is just basically put together with hand tools and uh, uh, just a drill gun. Basically, you know, I the only big tool I used was a chop saw to cut the pieces of wood. For that so uh, i hope you guys enjoy this video i think it's going to be just about 30 minutes long so uh if you're watching this you're watching this to probably build something like this and since we're in quarantine hey you got a few bucks throw it together and you could have your own little enclosed building if you uh if you are looking to do something like this so uh yeah hope you guys enjoy and uh stay safe out there all right Got the screws, a shelf, and some clear siding to go along with the carport. Don't know how this will work, but I hope it will work good. I'm not sure where I'm gonna upload this, but I know it will eventually get uploaded. Today, we're gonna start building the carport for my skyline. So the issue is that I live in New York, I can't build a garage, and a garage costs a shitload of money. So what I'm doing is, well, I bought this cheap thousand dollar carport from Lowe's and I'm basically just going to enclose it by putting these sides on it. All right, so I tried to figure out what parts on my own went where and I was not entirely sure. So I just decided to look for the manual online. And of course, that was a hard thing to do. So I just literally tore the third box open and found the manual which so far seems pretty easy to do so well it seemed to follow so i don't know why people are complaining i might hit a hiccup later on we'll see anyways i've got the first piece kind of laid out here basically so these are the j's it's j-i-k so you've got the end elbow kind of piece here this is a little connector piece that slides inside of here and slides inside of here and then you just screw them in pretty simple so I've got one side laid out here and it goes just a little bit past this line which I'm okay with I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the other side over here somewhere and then I want to like I said I wanted to create one of the arches what I want to do is I want to make one of these to know the actual width that I'm dealing with before actually like screwing these things together and then it being a pain in the ass to move them around. All right, so I've got the rails laid out for this side and that side, and 
I already know what are the pieces I needed to create the arch. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go ahead and start screwing these together while I still have some sunlight. So I'm going to screw that side on first and then I'm going to go back and use a measuring tape and make sure that each and every single one is spaced out exactly the same as that side over there so we don't have any uh, discrepancies and um, well, I'm going to screw up this side too. Alright, so that entire rail is completely screwed together and this entire rail is completely screwed together. I've got a little bit of sunlight left, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw at least one of the uh, arches together and I'm going to put it in the rear. All right, so here we are day two. As you guys can see, I got one of the uh, arches up. I think I lost the footage from that, so I do apologize for that, but I've got everything charged up. I've got storage free. I've got my batteries charged up for my gun also, and I moved my car out of the way. So this way I could move the arches as I need to in this area and not have to worry about hitting the car. All right, so got all the arches installed and I did a little bit of cleanup so I could move the ladder back and forth quickly and easily. Now, the roofing is a pretty easy install. It goes N, M, M, N. So the parts that end with N, I believe are six zero and the parts that end with M are six one. So just refer to the manual if you're unsure, but, oh, here we go. So M is six one, N is six zero. So it goes N, M, M, oh, here we go, N, M, M, N. So, I already forgot, I'm a dit. N is first, so six zero, so these are the six one. So the six zero is the longer of the panels. So that's buried underneath all the others. So I'm gonna dig one of them out. I'm gonna grab the ladder, throw it up there and see how it goes. All right, so I've got the center pieces installed. As you guys see, it's all screwed down. All of the foam pieces in between to stop leaks, that's installed too. And as you guys can see, I got it pretty straight. And this takes a lot of time. This piece took an hour and 20 minutes to complete by myself. If you had someone helping you, you could probably cut that time in half because I had to keep on coming off the ladder to make sure it was nice and straight. And the other thing is that the posts were a little off. Obviously, there's nothing connecting them, so they're just moving back and forth. So I just used the bungee cord to like tie them together to bring them that exact amount that I needed. And once I was sure, I went ahead and I measured post to post to make sure everything was the same exact distance. So it all worked out pretty good for me. And now that the center piece is installed, well, now comes the easy part. The side pieces, all you need to do is just snap them in, make sure the holes line up with the beam, and then screw them in.
Alright, quick tip for you guys. When installing the roof panels, the hardest screws to put in would be the ones at the top. The reason being is that let's say you install a new sheet right here in this space where my hand is, right? Or I guess let's use this panel as an example. When I install this panel, the hardest screw to reach is that one at the end right there. The reason being is that you're standing over here, you have to reach all the way over there. So what I recommend is pre-drilling holes. So all I did was just take one of the screws and I'm using that as my tap basically. And I'm just going ahead and pre-drilling, pre-drilling, pre-drilling. I'm not going all the way, screwing all the way in. I'm just, I'm just getting right into the top. And that way, when it comes time to install the panel that's gonna go where my hand is right now, it's gonna be really easy to screw these puppies in. And I go ahead, went ahead and did it for these over here too. So it's just a quick tip, just to make your life a little bit easier when installing this thing, because you don't have enough leverage when pressing down on these upper corner pieces, unless you have a really tall ladder or you're up on the roof or something. So to make your life easier, I just recommend pre drilling it. It only takes a few minutes and it'll save a lot of time and energy. All right, another tip I wanna throw at you guys is to install the panel first. So you're just gonna slide it up underneath here like you're supposed to, and then install the foam tape. So as you can see, I don't have any foam tape installed here yet. The reason why is because once you get this snapped in, you need to slide it back and forwards until you line up all the screw holes, right? And when you do that, you sometimes move the tape out of position or roll it up. So. What I like to do is get in this position, then just lift this panel up and install the foam going from one end to the other and then cut it and then screw and so on and so forth. So getting done pretty quick. Um, the, there's a quick break in the rain. So I've only got to install those two more panels and then all of the side panels and then this side will finally be done. So as predicted, these corner panels are the easiest roof panels to install. It only took me 30 minutes to install all four of them and screwed all of them down, good to go. Everything's nice and level, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to do these on the corner. This will take me more time just for the fact that it's a really awkward space, but I'm gonna see what I can do. All right, as you guys can see, I just could not resist it. I cleared the entire area out and I pulled my car in here. It's raining. This is what this thing is for. It's supposed to keep the car out of the element. And boy, does she look sick as hell in there. I tried to put on the PVC siding, but I need someone to help me hold that up. So that's, I'll, don't worry, I'll do that tomorrow. And this, well, that's tomorrow too. But look at the spacing in here. I've got more than enough space here. I'd say it was at three, four feet. I got my chop saw, the boxes my light, my vacuum, and I could still walk around the car and still have space on this side to open up my door without any issues as all. Uh, as obviously I have a Skyline, it's right-hand drive, so, um, so yeah, this, is, this works out pretty damn good. All right guys, so I don't know if I'm gonna roll the uh, install of the siding into the same video as the carport itself build, but if I am, well, this is what I'm doing. So, or if I do it separately, I don't know. But, but whatever. Anyways, what I'm doing is I'm pre-drilling the holes. So assuming you're by yourself and you're trying to do this, the easiest thing to do is pre-drill the hole. So I measured out and I pre-drill the hole on each beam. And now all I have to do is just hold this up with one hand, use the gun, and well, it, it'll bore through this very easily. If you've got a material that's a much thicker probably maybe like the sheet metal you can what you're gonna want to do is pre-drill the holes on that too i'm not gonna pre-drill the holes on this because well it's very very thin so i could just bore through it very quickly and easily and uh, i'm just gonna set up the time lapse camera and uh let's get these things installed can't complain floor is nice and dry this side's a little wet obviously because it's not sealed off but as you can see having these sides make a big difference because guess what look no water in here at all all my tools are nice and dry so I'm gonna have to throw up the tarp on the back so I could put my shelving in the back put my tools back there
All right, guys, so first things first, I want to apologize for any wind noise that you might hear. It is quite windy today, but I just want to get this update out of the way. So this is the biggest update so far. And the update is that this is being turned into a garage for security purposes. So plain and simple, I finished installing all the transparent siding, which I absolutely love. It gives me that nice look of seeing my car and all that stuff from the outside. I really like it. It's really cool, but it's not, it's, it's not very good for security. So after I had put this all on no more rain was coming in on this side so I decided to build my shelving unit finally and as time went on I ended up filling it up with stuff that ended up costing quite a lot of money so this is all stuff I already own it's just been basically scattered all over the place but now I finally have a garage type of thing to put it in I even have my engine lift in here so all of this stuff costs quite a lot of money jack stands jacks air tanks all that stuff is quite a lot of money and I it would really suck if someone can just walk in here and just walk away with my stuff so to to counter that I'm putting a swinging door on the front here so a swinging door is gonna be on mounted on this side and on that side so this way I, I could just swing it open I could take the car out and I could swing I could close the door back remember I'm trying to keep this on a budget and the swinging doors are the cheapest thing to do now now that I've got swinging doors imaginary installed, they can no longer walk in through the front. They would have to actually break into it. So the other easiest thing for them to do would just be break this siding. This is transparent siding. It's not that strong. If you push it, it's going to crack and break. So to counteract this, I've now switched to this aluminum siding. So I've got a bunch of it here. It's really cheap. Like I think like $13 or $14 for a 12 foot piece that's 12 inches wide. I absolutely love this thing. So <laughs> this is way better for a security purpose than this. But don't worry, this is not going to go to waste. I'm just going to take this and transfer it onto this side because I I'm not worried about security on this side. Obviously, water still gets in over here. And um, that's because obviously nothing's stopping it. So I'm just gonna take those pieces, transfer them over here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and bolt on all these aluminum pieces on this side right now. So this is today's project. The next project is the swinging doors, and then the project after that is taking these, bolting them on over there, and then we should be pretty much damn near close to having an actual garage. The back is gonna remain a tarp for now until I figure out exactly what I wanna put back there. All right, we just made it out of light. Sun is just setting, but I have completed the siding and it looks pretty damn good. It's a little bit more white than the roofing, but hey, it is what it is. I can't really complain. It looks pretty damn good. Like just looking at it from the side like this, you'd actually think that this is a real garage. So I'm pretty happy about that. The sensor light is working really good with it's got a little solar panel. Really happy with the way that came out. All right guys, so I believe where we last left off was me pulling off the transparent siding and installing the aluminum siding. It's been two days since then. Yesterday was below zero degrees, but I did go buy the materials I needed for turning, for creating a gate in the front here. So it is gonna be a 12 foot wide gate. So literally that distance of that two by four right there. And that's kind of perfect because normally there's a vehicle parked here. So I could swing the gate fully open without touching the vehicle that's going to be parked right here so that's really important and now that i've got that worked out i'm just going to go ahead and start framing this puppy up remember i'm no master carpenter or anything like that i'm i'm close to your average joe i just like building shit so uh hopefully this comes out just the way i planned
All right, guys, so I've got my set of beams installed here. I only put the uh, 45s on the inside because this thing's really strong already and it won't be taking any weight or anything like that. I just want it structurally strong. So that's pretty good. I don't want to put any more weight on it because I want to keep it as light as possible. So now I've got my hinges here. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my hinges to the wood. And then I'm going to attach the wheel or I have multiple wheels on the bottom part. And then we're going to go ahead and stand this puppy up and try to attach it to the garage. Uh, I'll see if someone's around to help me hold it up for just a few minutes while I screw it on there. It does work. I could just grab this right here. I need to put the correct bolts in the hinges, but it works exactly as designed. And the good thing is that it braces inside of here. And I put this bracket on the outside over here so that the risk of this falling into my car is less. Cause that's my biggest fear. Like if wind or something happens and something pushes this into the car, but I'm pushing this right now. There's no give at all. So I'm really happy with that. The gap on the floor is very minimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like a little, uh, I'm going to have to take some sort of plastic or something to put along the bottom on the inside so that no squirrels or anything like that can squ crawl underneath and get inside. Um, so the gaps are very minimal. So I just need to create some sort of latching system now to latch this puppy on and we are good to go. Now, we've got a big gaping hole on the top here. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to utilize the two by 12 that I still have laying around. And we're gonna cut a piece that goes up in the top and then we're gonna cut another piece that goes right along the top of this thing right here. And the reason why we're gonna be doing that is because we need somewhere to mount our other panels like this. So that's what I'm gonna get started on right now. All right guys, so it's like 11 o'clock at night and I just want to make a quick update just to show you how far I've gotten. So up there is done, nothing up there has really changed, but I have installed this. I've got door handles installed and of course the security wire also installed. So let's close up. The security wires ran nice and neat. It's not in the way at all. So I need to get the little rubber cover to go on top of that. And I also ran the one in the back, but you can't see it right now because it's covered by that tarp. I also cleaned up inside of here. I ran an extension cord so I could have some music. And um, I started cleaning up my rack a little bit, but it's a little too late and I'm a little too tired. So I'm just gonna go in now. So the only thing left to do is install the siding over here. And once that's done, well, uh, that'll pretty much be it for now. The next big project would be building a wall for the back there that's going to be basically a tool wall where I can hang tools and stuff like that but that's not a priority the priority is getting this side done just so no more rain no more snow or anything like that will come in and that's pretty much it so I'll see you guys the next time we have to put that side on
Alright guys, I am so excited because I am in the final stages of actually being done with this project for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean all this up. I've just been shoving stuff in here, but I've gotta paint a car tomorrow, so I have no choice. I have to clean all this up and have all my tools ready. Set up my air tools over there. I've got some shop lights. I've got one installed there. So I'm gonna install the rest. I'm gonna have them set up on their own switch. I've gotta set my air tank up over there with the tools and stuff. So I'm gonna get cracking on that right now. Alright guys, so I'm really happy to say that the garage is finally complete. complete. The budget $1,500 garage is actually done. So um, these two pieces up here are brand new because the originals that I cut are now in the rear at the top. And the reason why is because the first time I cut them for up here, they weren't cut right. And you can see pieces of the framing behind it. These are cut almost damn near perfect. So you can't see any framing behind it. And um, they those uh, pieces that were here they fit back there almost perfectly too so that that just worked out really good um everything's bolted down and now the rear is sealed so i don't have to worry about animals coming in or anything like that so it's complete this side is complete there's nothing that needs to be bolted on or anything like that actually no i'm lying this this solar light was actually installed right up here so once i screw that on that it is actually complete now as far as the inside goes and all of this crap that's something separate but as far as the building is concerned she's complete so i'm just gonna go ahead and screw this on right now and then i'm gonna get to cleaning this up If you've made it this far, congrats. You now have somewhat of an idea on how to make your own little uh, garage shed thing on a very tight budget. And if you guys haven't seen my video already, I made a video showing how to make masks and I think this is a uh, super important during this point in time. I'm actually gonna make some and donate them to a local hospital just to uh, help out since I know that there is a shortage of these. And uh, the weather is so beautiful today. I'm gonna actually get some work done on the RX-7 and the Skyline. Can't waste a beautiful day like this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay safe out there.